Welcome to SKNIS Perspectives, an interactive program of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service, aired weekly on this radio station. On today's edition, water, water everywhere, but soon there may not be a drop to drink. Climate change over time, what that would do is it would create drier dry seasons and wetter wet seasons. And so what happens with that is that you get all this water when you don't really need it so much and much less water in the times that you do need it. Assistant Water Engineer Dr. Halasi Haley joins us to discuss activities for World Water Day, this year's extended dry spell, the launch of the Water Services Department website, and if persons should be paying more for water. I'm Ian Richards. That's all ahead on Perspectives. And we're joined today by Dr. Halasi Haley, who, of course, is a water assistant water engineer at the Water Department. And Dr. Sahili is no stranger to our program or to our listeners, as she would have been here some time ago. Dr. Sahili, welcome back to our program. Thank you very much. Now, before we begin, we're here to discuss World Water Day. At least that will be the primary focus for today's discussion. But before we get into that, let's talk a bit about the water situation here in St. Kitts and Nevis. So, I live in the St. Peter's area, and we've been experiencing some low water pressure. I understand that there are certain parts of the island as well, too, that has been having challenges. Yes, I'm, I'm really happy to, um, to be here today and to talk about water issues that we're having right now and in general. As you know, in, in St. Kitts and Nevis, we rely heavily on water that comes from rain. It recharges our groundwater reservoirs, which they call aquifers. So, you know, a good amount of our water comes from groundwater, uh, 60, 70 percent, and the rest comes from springs. And so when you go through a dry spell, and generally speaking, you know, we, we have these drier periods always around Easter from January to March, April. And this year we're having a dry spell and it's impacted us maybe more so than in other years. And it's mostly because it's this dry spell coupled with some other operational and infrastructural issues that we've had in the past year. And these two things have kind of combined to create kind of a perfect storm in a sense that has made it that some of our consumers are getting low pressure, especially in the evenings. We've had to preemptively shut off supply in some areas of Bass Terre and, you know, lower St. Peter's. And I know that this is something that consumers are not accustomed to especially in St. Kitts, maybe in other areas, you know, uh, of the Caribbean, this is a kind of commonplace, but not so much in St. Kitts. I think it really underscores the fact that we think that water is in abundance in St. Kitts. And that's actually not the case. We have a limited, precious water resource, and we have to work very hard to make sure that we have it for our consumers today and for our consumers tomorrow and for generations to come. And we all have a role to play in that. And especially at this time, um, it's very important that the public is aware of how they're using water. So that, you know, small leak in your toilet that y you know is there, that's something that needs to be repaired very quickly, especially at this time of year. If not to save water on your water bill, just for the general public and for all of us to be able to kind of enjoy that supply. And in conserving the water, you know, if we all take small steps around our homes, this has really a great impact down the road. When you conserve water, you're able to delay kind of very large investments in infrastructure sometime into the future. So as a country, it helps us save critical dollars that we don't really have right now and that you know we can use in other sectors. Okay. You mentioned that the dry spell that we've been experiencing is that it is a bit more unusual than it has been in previous years. Exactly how? Well, I don't have data right in front of me in terms of rainfall, but... Um, it's obvious when you, you look around the island that we've received less rainfall than we would normally receive. Also, there's the impacts of climate change. This is kind of another elephant in the room, as they say. Climate change, over time, what that would do is it would create drier dry seasons and wetter wet seasons. And so what happens with that is that you get all this water when you don't really need it so much and much less water in the times that you do need it. And it really causes us to have to operate in a different manner completely and adapt, as they say. In this particular case, the role of the government and the Water Services Department in particular is to look for new sources of water and invest, of course, in infrastructure. But also the infrastructure that we do have has to be maintained in a very timely way and we have to be on top of those issues. Otherwise, as these dry seasons become drier, this situation would get worse. Is that in reference to the infrastructural development that you were referring to earlier? 
Actually, it's the lack of infrastructural development, you could say. In recent times, some of our infrastructure is aging. This is true of all types of infrastructure. Roads, which is maybe the most obvious one, you know, as time increases and more cars are on the road, you know, the roads deteriorate. It's the same thing when it comes to water. Uh, when you drill a well, that well has a lifetime. And in many cases, our wells are 40 years old. And that's pretty much the design life of a well, you know. If you get 40, 50 years out of a well, you've actually done quite well. And we have many wells that have reached that age. And so as a result, we have to take steps to rehabilitate that well or to drill new wells completely. We have plans to do that, but sometimes those plans don't materialize for financing issues. We all know that we're in a very difficult time when it comes to economics and, and financing of infrastructure. It's very expensive. It's very capital intensive. But we, we do need to make those decisions as a country. Okay. All right, Dr. Sahili, so tell us a bit about World Water Day. Now, of course, St. Kitts and Nevis will be joining with countries um, that are member states are affiliated with the United Nations in observing World War Today, which incidentally started back in 1993. Tell us a bit about the day and the theme for this year. World Water Day is held annually on March 22nd, and it's really a means of focusing attention on the importance of fresh water in our daily lives and advocating for the sustainable management of water. The UN has declared this entire year the International Year of Water Cooperation, and so it's also the theme for World Water Day. And this is a really interesting topic because it really underscores generally what I talk about when I'm on the radio, when I'm out with the public, in that we have a shared responsibility when it comes to water. Unlike other types of utilities, this one requires a utility bringing the water to you. And then there's this personal responsibility about how you utilize that water. And water cooperation really underscores that, that it takes a lot of people working together in order to manage water resources in a sustainable way. There's also some other kind of key aspects about water cooperation. Water kind of connects everybody. It's kind of the foundation of almost all economic activity, if you think about it. And so cooperating in the management of that resource brings and creates economic benefits for all. It's crucial for preserving, as I said, um, water resources and protecting the environment, although maybe not so much in St. Kitts and Nevis, but in many countries in the world, when you cooperate when it comes to water, it is a kind of a foundation for peace. It unites people, it unites communities, and it builds peace. And it creates trust amongst groups and communities, especially, say, in larger countries, uh, water-scarce countries in particular. And so tell us a bit about the type of activities that um, the department has planned to highlight and raise the awareness of persons about the importance of water as we move forward. So, um, as in other years, we have a, a whole week of activities, and uh, this year, again, built around the theme of, of water cooperation. So, we, we spend the first part of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and um, we visit schools, primary schools, uh, secondary schools throughout the island, and uh, we speak to the children, and we let them know about water conservation and what they can do in their homes and, and what they can do as a, a school community. On Friday which is actually World Water Day falls on Friday this year, we'll be in the circus and we'll be basically launching our website. And this is a very big event for us. It's going to be a platform with which we can communicate with the public and information can be you know, found in a much kind of easier and transparent way than it was in the past. So this kind of platform is going to have all types of information for, for consumers. There'll be a whole section on customer services, how to pay my bill, how to read my meter, how to interpret my bill, what to do when I have a leak, who is my water overseer, when does my meter get red, all kinds of information that y you might have wondered about you'll be able to have at your fingertips. All types of forms will be on the website, um, new connection forms, change of address forms. There will be a whole section on water conservation and education, all types of materials, posters that school teachers or, or you know, anybody can access for their children and, and even for themselves in terms of how to conserve water in the house. And notices, we'll be able to, to post notices about water interruptions, emergency repairs. And so we really would encourage everybody to visit the website. It goes live next week. The URL is water.gov.kn. And this website will be updated continuously and we'll have different um, access to social media as well, you know, BB pins and uh, Twitter and all, all of those things for people to be able to be in touch with us. So we'll be launching that officially in the circus on Friday and people can come and engage with us and even make inquiries on their account. We'll be live with all of our software to be able to query their accounts if they have questions. And then finally on Saturday, we'll, we'll be having a guided hike to our largest source, which is the Wingfield source. 
That'll be around 7 a.m. It's open to the public. It's free of charge. Anybody can join us. We meet at the Wingfield Estate grounds, and uh, it'll be a chance to walk up to the source, have a chat with many of our staff members, learn about how we collect water from our springs, and exactly how that water gets to your taps, which should be very uh, interesting morning, and we encourage everybody to join us. That has been happening for a number of years. How would you say that has um, the public has responded to that? Have you had the type of participation that you would like? The guided hikes uh, actually only started last year, and so we hope to make it a yearly, uh, you know, yearly activity. Last year was a hike to Stone Fort. We would have liked to have more people, and so hopefully this year Wingfield is more accessible. It's uh, a little bit easier to access, um, more parking. Uh, maybe the hike is not as difficult either. Maybe calling it a hike might be a little bit of a stretch. It's, it's actually a very nice walk and it can be easy for you know all ages. And so um, we hope that maybe we'll, we'll get larger participation this year and then you know growing into years to come as well. What about activities, Dr. Sahele, to take the message more so to young persons? You mentioned that, of course, uh, the school visits mm -hmm. that take place annually when St. Kitts and Nevis observes World Water Day and World Water Week of activities, mm -hmm. so to speak. But what about like essay competitions or poster competitions? Is that included as well? I'm really glad you actually brought that up. It's not included in, in this week of activities, but we do have because this is the International Year of Water Cooperation, we actually are planning to engage the public more so than we have in past years. And one way that we're going to be able to do this, there's a OECS-funded project called the RAC Project, R-R-A-C, and it's, it's all about reducing the impacts of climate change. And the project in St. Kitts actually focuses on water because one of the ways that you can adapt to climate change is and a lot of impacts, as I mentioned earlier, of climate change are related to water. And so the more that we can conserve, and so our project is about water auditing and water conservation. And so we'll be training a whole cadre of, of persons on how to walk into a home or a business place or an institution and look at how they use water and make recommendations about how they can use their water more efficiently. And so we'll be training um, at least uh, 20 to 30 persons on how to conduct water audits. And uh, part of this project as well is going to be about conservation, how to reach the public, how to kind of hone our message a little bit. And so we will be engaging with the public, and it would probably include maybe, if not an, an essay competition, there will be some type of competition in which we engage youth. So you'll be seeing us more, you'll be hearing more about this project in the months to come. And of course, officials at the Water Department, including the Minister himself, Deputy Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Earl Asin Martin, has urged locals to conserve water in various ways as much as possible. Yes. Can you give us some tips as to how that can be done? Oh, sure, definitely. You know, there's a lot of uh, places in the home that you can conserve water. In particular, in, in our experience, the main source of water leaks in the home is from toilets. It is remarkable how much water can be wasted from a leaky toilet. I think people wouldn't realize. And part of this is about kind of paying attention to your water bill. Water is to be frank, is, is entirely too cheap in St. Kitts. And so sometimes you may not pay attention to that bill because that bill is only $20. And that bill spikes one month from $20 to $30. You still may not, may not pay much attention. But that $10 represents thousands of gallons that if you haven't changed your behavior, you must wonder, where did that thousand gallons go? It is most likely, in most cases, from a leaky toilet. And so it's important to pay attention to your bill because that leak, you know, you may not hear it. You know, a, a very obvious toilet leak, you tend to hear this kind of hissing sound coming from your toilet. But in some cases, it does still leak and you don't hear that sound. And your water bill is going to be your first indicator that there's something going on and that you need to act fast. In most cases, it's a very simple thing to fix. You may even be able to do it yourself or you can call a local plumber. But you can easily waste thousands of gallons uh, per month from a leaky toilet. Uh, faucets as well, very slow leaks can leak... Um, you know, 15 drips per minute can add up to like three or four gallons wasted per day. And you know that adds up uh, per month. When you wash dishes, not to run the tap continuously. You know, just have a, a section for dirty dishes. You can soap them up, clean them, and then rinse them off instead of having the water running the whole time that you're cleaning the dishes. Showers, a five-minute shower can take 10 to 25 gallons of water. So, you know, keeping that shower short and sweet is, is a good way to, to save water. In terms of outdoor use, you know, especially during this time of year, it's probably not a good time to water your grass. And I think it's okay. I think we need to accept that it's okay for your grass to be yellow. <laughs>
Grass is a very hardy plant, and even though it turns yellow, uh, when the rain returns, your grass will return to its green color. So it's okay not to irrigate. And if you're going to irrigate, to be very judicious about when you do it, to do it not at the height of sunshine because you'll be losing a lot of water to evaporation. So to do that in the evening or, or in the early morning. And basically, you know, generally speaking, only use water when you need it. Don't leave it running and be sure to turn it off when you're finished. If you come out to the circus on, on Friday, World Water Day, we'll have brochures and posters with these tips at hand so that you can take home and, you know, have it on your fridge just to kind of keep that information handy and to remind you about ways that you, could, you can do that. I saw on the UN website there was an activity which seems to become very popular on social media, particularly Facebook, where persons vow not to use the tap for a day. Not very practical, perhaps, in these parts, but what are your thoughts on activities like those, you know, where persons make a promise not to do something? I know, for instance, when it comes to energy, that there is a day where everyone decides that at a certain hour they're going to shut off the lights. I'm a proponent of those activities. And like I said, because we're going to be engaging the public much more this year, I'm hoping to roll out a, a pledge. You would take a pledge to do a certain activity, perhaps uh, washing your dishes or taking shorter showers or, you know, uh, checking your, your toilet one or two activities that a, a consumer would commit to, and then even be willing to have us monitor their account and tell them at the end of two or three months how much water they've saved as a result of implementing their pledge. So I'm a proponent, of course, of anything like that that would keep water kind of at the forefront of a person's mind because I think that's the main problem is we turn on the tap and we don't really think about where that water came from. But it took hundreds of staff it took millions of dollars of investment over the medium and long term and even per year in recurrent expenditure to bring that water to your tap. I think a lot of people don't maybe don't realize that and maybe need to be reminded of that continuously. So any type of activity like that that keeps that kind of at the forefront of your mind is, is wonderful and should be advocated. Any discussions to raise the rates of water? Well, you know, water pricing of water and water tariffs, you know, can become a very controversial issue. But in general, it's, it's very well known that the price of water really influences people's behavior. So uh, as a result of water being cheap, people uh, don't, don't treat it with the respect that it, it deserves as a, as a resource that's very vulnerable and not unlimited. People believe that the water is unlimited, but it is not. And so price has a very important pr um, role to play in how people utilize that resource. And so, although we don't have any immediate plans to raise the, the water tariff, I think that I wouldn't be surprised if most people would be willing to pay more for water. Because it is, um, and, and you realize that, especially during this time when you have low pressure, how important that resource is and how it supports, like I noted earlier, all economic activity, it supports life. And so I think people would be willing to pay more. And I think as a country, we should have that discussion about how much we're willing to pay in order to conserve that resource and make sure that it's, it's here for, for all of us. Any final comments that you'd like to leave us with? Well, you know, the usual thing. I think we need to work together to manage and utilize our water resources in, in a sustainable way. And I think it's important to talk about this resource, especially with our children, because in, in receiving a water connection, we have a certain right. We have a right to that water, but with that right comes responsibilities. And we have to be serious about that responsibility. And, you know, to implement water conservation practices in our home, to report any incidences of abuse or misuse of water to the Water Services Department, and, you know, to pay attention of how we use the water, to pay our water bill, because it's, it's a very important resource. And like I said, it, it's the foundation of all of our economic activity and of our society in general, and we all have a role to play. Does the department have an emergency hotline where persons can call if there's a broken pipe or anything that they can get um, assistance or at least the attention of the water department so that they can send engineers to deal with it right away? Of course, we can always be reached at 466-3070. Even after hours, your call will be directed to, you tell the person where you are and then he'll, he'll direct your call. It underscores another issue, get to know who your water overseer is. This is your frontline soldier in a sense. You know, you have a problem. There's a person in every, basically pretty much in every village, in every district. On our website, there'll be a map, and you'll know who your water overseer is if you don't already know with his phone number. And so get to know who your water overseer is. He often, this will be the, the best person to call when you see something or when you have a problem in your home or, you know, a standpipe. So I encourage you to go to the website uh, again when it goes, it will be going live next week, water.gov.kn. And again, you can call us anytime, 466-3070, 466-1467. Dr. Halasihili, pleasure having you today. Thank you very much. 
And that's our program. If you would like to hear this edition again or any other program from this year, visit our new Facebook page or YouTube channel. Just run a quick search for SKNIS St. Kitts and Nevis on Facebook and the SKNIS on YouTube. A number of interesting information and video pieces can also be found on these accounts, so be sure to give them a view. I'm Ian Richards. We're pleased that you joined us for this edition of SKNIS Perspectives. Join us every week at this same time on this radio station. This program is produced by the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.